Hello and welcome, my name is Olive and this is another one of my anti-desk stretch club videos. It's for the whole body, so for you to use maybe before the start of your day, in the middle of work or at the end, whatever feels good. So we're going to be working through some joint rotations, some muscle activations and a little bit of nerve work. In terms of equipment, all you need is like your yoga mat or a carpet, a yoga block or brick as they're called if you have one. If not, a good substitute is a book or maybe even a pillow. A little round object that you can pick up pretty easily. So this is like a little um, massage ball. You can also use a tennis ball or an apple or an orange. And last up, you need some kind of like stick object. So this is what I have from like my free weights and it's quite heavy, but you can even use like a broomstick. <laughs> Or if you don't have one of those, what's also pretty good is to get a wine bottle that's full or an alcoholic bottle, whatever it is, and just make sure you can hold um, the head of it or the neck. So yeah, that's all you're going to need. I'm going to see you starting on the mat, kneeling down. We're going to start with just some sort of like body taps or just body rubs, whatever you want to call it, just to kind of like stimulate the blood underneath our skin and just have a little bit of physical connection to our physical bodies to see how it all feeling. So just go ahead, find yourself in a comfortable seat, close down your eyes for a sec, rest your hands in your lap, try to find a nice neutral upright spine and just start to focus in on your breathing. Noticing the inhalation followed by the exhalation and how your body responds to each. Inhaling to notice the air move into the nose, down the back of your throat, expanding the lungs. Exhale to contract the lungs, pushing the air back up the throat and out of the nose. Just going and noticing for two more rounds of breath. And then when you're ready to start to roll the palms together, building up some heat. I'm going to start by taking the hands over your eyes. And then with your fingertips, start to massage into your forehead. Start to move around to your temples. Now it's up to you how much pressure you want to put in. Go as light or as hard as you want. Start to find movement around to the jaw, the cheeks, anything. It could be as simple as like a little bit of a stroke as well across your face. And then start to move down towards the neck. Again, as you do this, you can squeeze lightly, you can stroke, you can tap, whatever feels good, however the body seems to respond. Now try and move down your traps on the way to the shoulder. Maybe let's focus on the left arm first, so kind of squeezing down left shoulder, left bicep, forearm. I quite like to really run my fingers down my forearm and really try to get the blood or fresh blood to my wrists. Now they're an area that gets actually quite tight, surprisingly, so it just feels good. Then even come down into your fingers, press out through the wrists, see what feels good. And travel back up, move across to the right shoulder. So again, maybe start by squeezing again. You know what feels good. Down the bicep, down into the forearm, squeezing, tapping, stroking, whatever feels good. Notice how this side responds as you travel down to the fingertips. And all the way back up. Now, as we come to the chest, I just want you to lightly tap into the chest down towards the belly, towards the ribs to the side, your back, maybe bring in some squeezing, <laughs> whatever feels good. Down towards your hips, now you might need to stretch out the legs in front of you as we come down. We're just going to spend some time sort of massaging down the thighs, maybe you give them a little bit of a tap, whatever feels good, because they are very large muscles in our body, quite a little bit more, and down to the calves. And then eventually into the feet. Now spend some time here. Try to press down the soles of the foot into the heel, the arch, the balls, the toes. Our foot, we don't really tend to give it a lot of love, but it needs so much sort of like upkeep just to keep us healthy. 
the foundation of a lot of things. And travel back up onto the other side again, little taps. Strokes down the leg, into the calf, eventually into the foot. Now there is obviously the purpose behind all of this, this idea of really getting in touch with how we're feeling physically, that blood flow, that circulation, that sensory kind of element. Good, and then bring it all the way up and then just shake out the fingers. You can blink your eyes back open if you've had them closed. And we'll get started. So come back to a kneeling position or cross leg, whatever feels good where your spine is nice and upright. We're gonna come into some neck cars. So close down the hands, make a fist, push the fist away from you. Roll the shoulders back and down, nice and neutral. Take it slow, you're gonna drop the chin down to your chest and observe the breath moving back of the head down in between your shoulder blades. Now look across towards your right fist, breathing down the left side of the neck. Slowly take your right ear towards your right shoulder as your gaze comes forwards. Then slowly circle the head behind you, taking left ear, left shoulder again, breathing. Look down at left fist, keeping the shoulders and the rest of the body still. Roll chin back to the chest, and then looking all the way forwards. Cool, we'll go one more time. Chin drops down, breathe into the back of the neck. Look across again towards left fist. Left ear, left shoulder, gazing forwards. Make sure the right shoulder's not creeping up. And take your time, roll the head behind, right ear towards right shoulder. Look down towards right fist. Chin back to the chest. And then looking all the way upwards. Release the hands, give them a little flick. Maybe come forwards onto hands and knees and just pat out the feet a little bit. And when you're ready, come back to sit back down. We're gonna have a little look at some flossing for our median nerve. So you're gonna extend the right hand straight above your head. Allow the shoulder to travel up to the ear. And now you're gonna lower that hand so it's out towards the side, fingertips are facing down, and the wrist, the elbow, shoulder are in a nice long line. So you might feel this buzzing, this tingling, this numbness, this kind of like pins and needle traveling down the shoulder, bicep, forearm, index and middle finger. So just wriggle the fingers out, let them move. And now we'll come into the flossing part. So you're gonna turn your fingers upright, so they're up towards the ceiling. Now as you drop the fingertips down to the ground, you're gonna take right ear to the right shoulder. And then you're gonna breathe, obviously. <laughs> and as you lift up the fingers, you're gonna turn your head to the left side. And then again, fingertips drop down, head to the right. Fingertips lift, head to the left. Just gonna keep this going at our own pace, nice and slow. Observe how, again, the sensation sort of changes as the head and the hand does as well. We'll go one more time each way. And back through center, let that hand come down, give it a little shake. Cool, so onto the left side, extend the left hand back up. Again, lower it so the wrist, the elbow, shoulder are in a nice long line, wriggle out the fingers. Observe the sensation on this side, what is your physical body telling you? And stop the movement, turn the fingertips up. So again, drop the hand down, left ear, left shoulder. Bring the hand up, right ear, right shoulder. And again, just going like this a couple of times. What does this side feel like? How is it different? How is it the same? What's going on? Good. So one more time each way. Then come all the way back to center, lower it down, give it a little shake. Cool. So we're gonna come onto our hands and knees. Have, feel free to pat out the feet a little bit. We're gonna come into some spinal movements, so from flexion and extension. First of all, I just want you to move through some cat-cows as you normally would. So pushing through the floor, looking to the belly, arching the back through spinal flexion, and then letting the belly button drop towards the ground, squeezing shoulder blades into spinal extension. And just move through this as you normally would. 
breathing, controlling the movement. Maybe if you want, twist side to side, get some lateral flexion in, whatever feels good. And then we're going to start to try break it down so we gain more control over our spine. Try to learn at least how we can start to move the different segments of our spine a bit more independently. So we've got the four regions, the sacrum, the lumbar, the thoracic, the cervical parts of our spine. And we're going to see if we can move them independently as we go through kind of like the cat counts. So first of all, to learn control over our thoracic and our cervical part of our spine, you're going to come down onto your knees, let your bum sink back down to your heels, feel free to put a pillow underneath, and you're going to try let your rib cage come as close as you can towards your thighs, or you can grab your pillow and your block and place it there. We're trying to limit the movement into our lumbar and our sacral part of our spine, so just moving from the rib cage up. So hands are going to be out in front of you, and what you're going to do, take an inhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together, try lift the chest looking upwards, so again, spinal extension. And then on the exhale, drop the chin. Try to lift the rib cage away from the thighs into flexion. Again, lifting, extending, and then reversing. So again, very similar to cat cow, but we're just restricting the movement to the top half of our spine. Letting it be nice and controlled, gaining awareness of what this feels like in this region here. So try to almost create those mind maps of what this feels like as you move this part of the spine. Remember as well to move your neck because that's where our spine starts. So one more each way. And then settling back. Cool, so bring yourself forwards into tabletop. This one's a little bit funnier. We're going to try work into the sacral part and the lumbar part of our spine. So you're going to keep your bum high in the air above the heels and come down perhaps onto your forearms. Now, this involves a little bit of a butt wriggle. It's a little bit weirder to get used to, but you're trying to keep the upper portion of your spine nice and still. So from again, rib cage up. And all you're going to try and do is move your pelvis, so drop it towards the ground, again to extension, and then move it away into flexion. So it requires maybe a little bit of awareness of even our glute muscles and our core muscles. So everything is involved in this movement and this tilting of the pelvis. Good. And if you're unsure or if it's something that feels really alien to you, Feel free to maybe place a hand onto one of your hip bones and just see how it moves. So let's go one more time each way and then we're going to marry the two movements together. And then when you're ready, all the way back into our tabletop position. So that's a little bit of a breakdown, now we're going to try marry it together. We're going to start the movements always from our sacrum, so from the tailbone and wave all the way up the spine. So. Let's go through cat cows, but again, with this sort of controlled movement and empowerment in mind. We're gonna start into extension, so drop the belly towards the ground, squeeze shoulder blades together. Now, as much as you can, try to first of all slowly move from the sacrum, so start to slowly, slowly tuck in, moving into flexion as you wave up into the lumbar, but the upper bit, so the thoracic, the cervical, hasn't moved yet. We're trying to control it, use the core, Nice and slow, nice and steady, start to push. Last thing that moves is the chin to the chest. And now we reverse it, we move the other way. So keep pushing through the ground with the hands, keep the chin where it is. Now start to move the sacrum. Then eventually the low spine. Then eventually mid thoracic and slowly into cervical. So it's a very controlled way of moving the spine through flexion and extension. So just take your time to go through it for a couple of rounds. The reason why I like to do it this way is because even distribution and pressure is now put throughout the spine rather than just always hinging at one point, sort of in between our lumbar and our thoracic vertebrae. But it also teaches you greater bodily control and awareness and empowerment of the spine and how we can move these areas almost independently. 
Okay, let's go one more time each way. It's always worth as well filming yourself do this because it's really interesting to see how you move. And slowly all the way back up. And then release. Come to sit back down onto your heels and maybe just roll out the wrists. Lovely. So we're going to grab our stick or our wine bottle or alcohol bottle, whatever it is, your little tool that can help you with your wrists. We're gonna start by holding it in the right hand. Try to hold it towards the edge if it's the stick, so the majority of the weight is towards the left side. You're gonna start with your right elbow in nice and tight to your body. So squeezing and holding it. Right now the right fist is facing the ground. Now we're gonna slowly, slowly start to lift the stick or the object up, and then slowly over towards the right side. So now the inner forearm is shining up. That's all we're gonna do, switch through the middle, then over to the left. Again, keep the elbow nice and tight, switch through the middle, and then over to the right. Just nice and slow, remember, slow and controlled throughout these movements, that's how we gain that increase in mobility rather than just rushing through for the sake of it and losing our integrity. And keeping the breath strong. Let's go for one more round. last time beautiful and switch over to the left side grabbing it maybe just shake the right wrist out elbow in nice and tight again try have the shoulder sitting into neutral so not rolling forwards or back too far bring it through the middle and over to the left so what we're doing we're moving our wrists through pronation and supination just trying to build a little bit of wrist strength in this area especially if you've been working at a desk all day this part of the joint does tend to weaken, so it's just worth bringing a little bit of movement, a little bit of strength back into the joints, a little bit of lubrication as well for them. Good, one more time. Nice and slow control, especially as you take the weight over to the left. Back through center, and then release your object down to the side and shake out the wrist. Lovely. So we're going to come up into a kneeling position. Feel free to put a pillow underneath the knees. I like to have my toes tucked, but you can have them flat. We're going to start with some more movement for the spine, so lateral flexion. Hands are going to go down to your thighs, and all you're going to do is bend nice and slow towards the right, back through centre, and then bend to the left. Now, as you do this, what you're not going to do is chuck your head over and then move. You're going to guide it from this sort of like pivot point of the thoracic section. Beautiful. And try to make sure the hips are steady and still so you're engaging the glutes, the core hips are staying facing forwards. Good, one more time each way. And when you're ready back through to center, take your hands across your chest, nice and slow rotate towards the right, just a little bit, back through center and then over to the left. Again, what you're not gonna do as you rotate is let the opposite hip shoot forwards. So you're gonna keep your hips square to the front. So imagine someone is behind you holding your hips in place so you can only move the thoracic section of the body. So again, core awareness and control. Let's go one more time each way. And then back through to center. Cool, so we're gonna sort of bring in a little bit of a complex of a movement. We're gonna involve like sort of a movement very similar to a squat involving a hip hinge and then a thoracic rotation. So again, maybe take your toes tucked for this. You're gonna start with bracing, so your hands out to the side, drop your bum back down to your hips, and then you're gonna shoot forward, squeezing the glutes, then rotate towards the right side. Again, hips still stay facing forwards. Right hand to tap the right heel, Left hand can kind of go across the chest. Back through center, drop back down, squeeze, then twist to the left. Again, we drop, we engage, we twist. Nice and slow, nice and controlled throughout this movement. Just gonna do it a couple of times. So working into our posterior chain, into the quads, the hip flexors, into the core, our thoracic spine. Maybe even getting a nice little bit of a toe stretch. Now, changing it up just for the last couple of reps. If you want, 
This time, instead of keeping the left hand to the shoulder, extend it up and above. Just so you get a little bit more traveling down the right side of the body. Let's go after this one. One more time on each side. And then coming all the way back. Lovely. Back onto the hands and knees and give the feet a little bit of a tap out. Lovely. So as we're down on our hands and knees, let's do some scapular push-ups before playing a little bit of a game. <laughs> so with this, you're going to keep your arms nice and straight throughout the movement. Your scapula is your shoulder blade, so we're going to think of just mobilizing that area through protraction and retraction. So drawing in through the belly button, bracing, you're going to start to squeeze your shoulder blades together. The head stays where it is. And then push through the hands, try to separate the shoulder blades. So similar-ish, perhaps, to cat-cow, but we're just mobilizing the scapula. Super important part of the body in terms of shoulder stability and health that we need to work on. So just take it nice and slow. Try not to bend the arms and just breathe nice and calmly. Good, let's go for one more rep each side. And then release and relax. Cool, so you're gonna find yourself again in a seated position. Doesn't matter if you're sitting like this or if you're cross-legged, but we are gonna do some teacups. I'm gonna use a block. You're welcome to use a book. You're even welcome to use a teacup full of water if you really want to challenge yourself. So if you've done one of my classes before, you know what this movement is. We're gonna do it from seated to kneeling to standing and then travel back down. Basically, you have your object in your right hand. I'm gonna start with it in the right hand. And you're not allowed to hold it with your fingers. So it's gotta be as flat as possible because that way we train that mobility and the proprioception a little bit more. So the idea is that you sort of create an infinity as you push a block up and then you spiral it all the way back down. So moving the shoulder through quite a lot of ranges, sort of creating that figure eight up and then bringing it all the way back down. And obviously like play around by changing directions get your spine involved as well so you can start doing it already just getting used to where it is so watch the object see how it changes how it moves how your wrist how your shoulder responds good and now from here we're going to come up so we're kneeling with the left foot planted on the floor so right knee to the ground left foot down Kneel wherever and see if you can continue this movement, spiraling up and spiraling down. Breathing throughout. Then we're gonna take our time, come to standing. So nice and slow, standing up. And again, we start to move. You can obviously bend your legs, you can stay low, you can go all the way up, whatever feels good. And then when you're ready, we're gonna swap it onto the left hand and see if we can go from standing to kneeling. So swap, take your time to get used to what it feels like on this side. It's a lot more restricted for me. <laughs> Remember that breath, check out. And now when you're ready, we're gonna come down onto the left knee, right leg forwards, spiraling again. Breathing throughout, twisting. You've got that cup of water, hopefully you haven't dropped it. <laughs> You don't have to go quick, you can take it super slow. And now see if you can come all the way back down to seated as we were. Still moving, still rotating. Make sure you've tried both directions as well. Last round. I'm <laughs> bringing it in. There we go. So don't worry if you dropped it, it's all part of the process, but hopefully those shoulders are feeling nice and good. So we're gonna come back to our kneeling position. So from kneeling, you're gonna step your right leg forwards. Now, whenever we come into a kneeling position like this, we're going to try and sort of activate and stabilize our pelvis. So what we do, we think about dragging this front heel back to the midline of our body, so towards our hips, so calves, hamstring switch on and the back leg we think about driving that knee forward so again hips are coming in so a bit more of quad and hip flexors switching on so it's super active for the lower body 
From here, let's take our right hand down onto our right knee. This left hand is going to start down by our side, making a fist. So we're going to do some spinal movements, and it will involve a nice hip flexor stretch. So you're going to reach that left fist out in front of you, then open it up behind, and slowly rotate towards the left hand side. Fist is facing the away or outside, and then rotating it forwards. So we lift. We rotate, and slowly forwards again. So the fist change. Right now it's facing the inside, and it will eventually face the outside. So make sure you're gaining that rotation into the shoulders, keeping those legs as active as possible. Breathing throughout. Let's go one more time. And then slowly back and releasing. Cross your hands across your chest, take an inhale, exhaling first, and then gently twist towards the right hand side. Again, just as much as you can, keeping the hips level. Now if you want to increase the stretch sensation to your left hip flexor, just simply bend a little bit more into the front leg. Try to press your big toe into the ground so the glutes are on, breathing for three, for two, one more. And then as you rotate forwards, bring yourself back up. Release hands and let's swap the legs over. Of course, put the pillow underneath if you want. So, let's start dragging front heel towards the back or midline, front knee forward. So everything's super active. Left hand onto the knee, right hand by our side. Start by lifting it in front, create the 180, open it up behind you, and then slowly swim it back nice and controlled, move through the thoracic. We open a little bit through the hips, but important that we have that stability through the legs. Good, again, remember the rotation into the shoulder. Good, last two. Last one. Beautiful, and release. Hands across the chest, taking an inhale. Exhale completely. Then twist towards the left hand side. Keep the hips steady, engage the glutes, and if you want to, bend into the front knee a little bit more. But make sure you're stable. Two more breaths here. Push down into the big toe. One more. Then rotate back through centre, bring yourself back up, and then release onto hands and knees, pat the feet out for a sec. Right, we're now going to come to lie down on our front and have a little bit of a look at something called W raises, for lack of a better name. Anyways, come down onto your belly, and the movement involves starting with our hands like extended out in front of us, and what we're going to do we lift the hands and the head simultaneously, then draw the elbows down by our side and try to squeeze here. So we kind of start to develop strength and awareness into the muscles in the upper back whilst the head is raised and extend in front and lower down. So before we do that, one of the things that we want to make sure we are doing is engaging our posterior chain. So making sure we're trying to press the hips towards the floor, engaging the glutes and the hamstrings and the calves. You can either do this with flat feet I prefer having my toes tucked and doing it. I feel it a little bit stronger. So I'm going to take the hands out in front of us. Maybe make some fists if you would like or have the palms open. Your forehead down to the floor. And then on the inhale, lift the head and the arms simultaneously. Draw elbows down by your body. Try to squeeze. And then again, extend and lower down. Inhale, lift. Squeeze. Extend and lower couple more times, going at your own pace. If you feel your lower back pinching, try not to lift as high. Have a little bit more core awareness and make sure you're still engaging the posterior chain. Good, we're gonna do two more. And then on the final one, we're gonna hold the W position for a couple of breaths. So this time, inhale, lift, hold and squeeze. Squeezing here for five. Breathing for three, for two, then on one, extend, release, come down, make a pillow with your hands, rock your hips side to side. Lovely. 
Then we're going to roll over <laughs> and come onto our back and do some glute bridges. So, lying flat on our back, make sure you can feel your heels with your fingertips, super important part. And it's going to be bowed by your side. This is a really nice way just to, again, bring back some activation to our posterior chain, especially if we've been sat down all day. So ground down through the toes, especially the big toe. As soon as you press the big toe to the ground, your glutes automatically kind of switch on a little bit more, or at least the signals are sent. So hands by your side, press the big toe, start to slowly curve up through the sacral, lumbar spine, engaging and lifting, and then slowly rolling back down. Just going to do that a couple times, squeezing and lifting, then slowly down. And just keep this going, thinking about what muscles we're activating. So we're not just using the glutes for this movement, we're also bracing through the core to protect the spine. We're also using the hamstrings to protect the hips and the spine. We're also using the muscles on the inner thigh and outer thigh, so we again protect and stabilise everything. So what you're thinking of doing for at least the hamstrings, think about driving the heels back towards the higher part of the body, so the shoulders. For the muscles on that inner and outer thigh, think about having that beach ball in between your knees and you're holding it lightly, but enough to create that activation. Let's go two more times, nice and slow. Remember, slow, you keep the integrity. And then slowly down. Take a moment, maybe hug your knees in or rock side to side, whatever. Now we're going to test out our pelvic stability a little bit more and our single leg strength. So planting the feet back down to the ground again. I'm going to lift my right leg up. Now it can be straight, it can be bent, whatever's more comfortable. But we're working the left leg first. So take both your hands onto your hips just so we figure out how they move as we do lift, whether or not they twist or stay facing upwards. Ground on through the left toe. Squeeze, engage, lift nice and slow, and then slowly back down. You're going to do five in total. Squeeze to lift, slowly back down. Only go as high as you want to, and try not to compromise on twisting in the hips just for the sake of height. It's far better to go lower with good form than high with bad form. So I think we've got one more. <laughs> and slowly down. Beautiful. Swap the legs over, ground down through the right. Again, press, engage, lift, slowly down. Try to again keep that stability, keep the same muscular activation and awareness like we did with our double leg lifts. Good, last one. And slowly release, hug the knees and gently let yourself rock side to side. Cool. Now we're going to roll over to our side, so roll over to the left, and a little bit of prep, we're going to do something called butterfly legs, and I've found that this is a really nice way for me to start to activate and switch on the muscles on the outer glute, so more glute medius. So first of all, we need to check our form, we need to check that our butt is in line with our heels and the knees come out in front of us a little bit more. Try to keep the rest of the upper body in line with the hips, so we want to brace through the core and make sure we're in a fairly neutral position. Now as we do this, what we're doing is involving a leg lift for the top leg. What we don't want to do is start to roll through the upper body. So you've got to be super stable through the upper part, so the core. So maybe if you're learning this, do this against a wall so you can't roll back. But I like to take my hands into my hips. We're just going to do a couple of lifts. So make sure the legs stay together, or the ankles, and you're slowly going to lift that knee just a little bit, engage enough, and then slowly back down. Engage to lift, slowly to the floor. Again, just keep this going without rolling back, without losing good form. Starting to feel that activation into the glutes, as well as the muscles on the inner and outer thigh. Of course, if this feels too easy or you would like to make it harder, just get one of the um, bands, like a Pilates band, and wrap it around your knees and then do the lift but nice and slow, nice and controlled. Good, we've got two more. Breathing throughout. Good, and slowly release. So roll over to the other side. So we've got right side down. And again, just check the foundation first. So ankles in line with the butt, neutral spine upwards, knees out in front of us, come down. <laughs> 
resting, however. I always think of that meme that draw me like one of your French girls when I do this. Anyway, we take left hand onto the hip, squeeze the butt, slowly lift, and slowly come back down. So again, we're going to do 10 reps. Super important to notice that this top knee is not going to open up to a full 90 degree because we simply do not have that available range in our hips without compromise. So again, try to keep the core braced. Breathing as you find the lift slow on the way back down. Good, two more. Last one. And then slowly release and bring yourself all the way up to seated. Lovely. So before we come into our last little game, we're gonna come into some 90-90 legs and look a little bit more at our hip rotation for internal and external. So, taking your left leg out in front of you and it's going to come at a 90 degree angle so ankle is in line with knee knee is in line with hip your back leg so the right leg is again going to try come to this angle where the hip is in line with the knee knee is in line with the ankle if you want take your pillow or take your block and put it underneath the right butt cheek so you have a little bit more stability the knees don't have to come directly down to the floor they might be hovering and the other option as well is if you feel like you are collapsing to the side like this, so to the left, we don't really want that. We want to try to keep a position where the shoulders are above the hips. Your options are to take a brick out to the left hand side and use it to prop yourself up a little bit more. Maybe you have a brick to the right hand side as well, just so you are a little bit more level and you're not collapsing. So the first thing we're going to do, internal rotation for the left hip socket. So, I'm going to turn angle and angle myself again. <laughs> With your hands either side off the left thigh, you're going to press your left foot to the floor, shoulders are nice and upright, and just lift the left knee as high as you want it to go without compromising on form, and then slowly back down. So again, lift and squeeze, slowly to the floor. I'm going to breathe throughout this, observing what muscles we are using with this lift. So we're looking at hip flexors, adductors, abductors, a bit of hamstring, calf, soleus, Achilles, the glutes, loads of muscles involved. Breathing, try to stay nice and upright. Let's go two more lifts, so we've done 10 in total. And then release. Now onto the back leg, a little bit of a pre-warning. I tend to get glute cramps when I do this, so you might as well. <laughs> So this time we're going to look at internal rotation for the back hip socket, so for the right. You're going to again push that foot to the floor, both hands stay where they are. Lift the knee up just a little bit and then slowly back down. So lift and engage without twisting too much and release. Breathing as you do it, observing what muscles you are using, again those big muscle groups, driving that foot into the floor keeping the breathing calm and regulated. If you have cramped, <laughs> try to shake it off. We've got two more. Last one. And release, nice. So last movement. This is even more of like cramp city if you haven't cramped already. We're gonna try lift the back foot. So again, a little bit more internal rotation, a little bit of a challenge. So, see if you can engage, press that right knee to the floor, see if you can lift the right foot up and down. We'll only do five. Now, if it's not lifting, have a look at it and maybe tap down the leg and tap the foot just to wake it up a little bit more. Good, last one. And then slowly release. Now to switch to the other side, take the hands behind you and switch the legs over towards the other direction. Take a moment, get comfortable, find your brick, get yourself supported. So again, 10 lifts for internal rotation for the right hip socket. Foot to the floor, lift the knee, slowly down. Okay, I'm just gonna go a couple of times. Breathing as you do this, press the leg into the ground, think about the muscle groups. Keep driving the hands so you stay nice and upright. Thinking about not letting the hips twist too much. Last two. And then release. Now to the back leg. Again, lifting the knee, external rotation, back hip, up for one. Again, only lift as much as you can without compromising on form. 
nice and slow. Try not to rush through it just because it's a difficult movement. Good, let's go three more. Breathing. Make sure you're still pressing into the front leg. Lovely, and release. Now, back foot, have a little look, maybe tap down the leg, wake it up. Five lifts, lift and slowly down. You might obviously lean forwards into this, that's cool, but try not to twist too much. Got two more, last one. Beautiful, and then release, switch back through centre, let the legs come out and give them a little shake. So the last thing we're gonna do is play a little bit of a game. So grab your little ball or your object, whatever it is, something that you can just pick up easily. We're gonna come into a squat position. And essentially what we're gonna do is start to move the ball around with one arm. So maybe place it with my left hand, but I've got to retrieve it with my right. And then I place it with my right and I retrieve it with my left. And the idea is that we just start to move around a little bit, think about our proprioception, our coordination. We don't always have to stay in a squat position. We can move, we can get high, we can get low, whatever it is, we can crawl. So start in a squat, as low as you wanna go or as high. Let's start with it in our left hand. So plant with the left hand, retrieve with the right. Plant it away, retrieve with the left. And you just start to get creative or as creative as possible. Sitting, twirling, moving. <laughs> and just see where it will take you. It doesn't matter what it looks like, there's no right, there's no wrong, but it's just quite fun to see all the different movement options that we have. If you mess up the hands, that's fine. Just a little bit of fun, just to get <laughs> the whole body moving again. Just get our brains thinking. <laughs> Okay, so let's go for maybe 15, 10 more seconds. Getting everything nice and awake. <laughs> so for five, four, three, for two, and then on one. Back to a kneeling position. And there we have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. This little Andy Desk Stretch Club, whenever you've used it in your day. If you like this video, please subscribe, comment, give me future suggestions, and I will see you next time.